All right, so um, we're just going to go through a very, very brief rundown of some of the basics of quantum mechanics, but I want to do this in a very straightforward way so that um, for the things to come, or the things that will come later on as we follow this book, again, this book is No-Nonsense Quantum Field Theory, <clears throat> as we go down this book, we'll understand sort of more conceptually <clears throat> and mathematically what's going on. So, <clears throat> excuse me, what we want to start off, so I basically, so I've pre-written a lot of stuff down here already because I really just want to blow through this quantum stuff because I'm kind of assuming that you've taken quantum before already and also um, we want to get, I'm sort of eager to get to the quantum field, the quantum fields. So we're starting so I'm, I'm, again, I've pre-written everything down so things can go quicker. So this might be a very quick video. So let's consider, for example, a Taylor series. A Taylor series is something that you're learning in Calculus 2. Right? If you haven't taken Calculus 2, this might be a little bit advanced for you. Maybe not a little bit. This might be somewhat of a learning curve for you. But we're going to this Taylor series. This is a representation of what e to the x looks like. Right? So we can e to the x again is a sum of the powers of x divided by these um, divided by these constants right so these constants are one factorial two factorial three factorial and so on till we get up to n factorial and this can be rewritten as um, a sum over n x n so all of this equals, so all of this right here is equal to a sum, right? So essentially what we've done is we've said e to the x um, is equal to the sum of powers, right? So this is going to be very important as we keep this in mind. So let's suppose now, let's ask the question, what if we have e to something... And that something is in the in these numerators. Let's consider a parameter t multiplied by a matrix, right? With this exponent being the thing that's going to be in our numerators, and so we would get something that looks like this, right? We're just exponentiating t and the matrix, right? And then we could say, okay, well, this uh, this matrix to the zeroth power. That's just the identity matrix, just like anything to the zeroth power is one. That turns out to be right here. So this is the identity matrix. So I'll explain what these red and green circles mean. And this here, right, it's just right here. This is literally just a copy because this is just this to the first power. And then to the second power, we get this matrix. This is just matrix multiplication, right? So it would be this times itself, okay? And we can continue doing this, right? So this would be this, this here, this matrix here is this matrix to the third power. This matrix here is this matrix to the fourth power and so on, okay? Now, what am I doing with these green and red? Well, I'm tracking these green and red points here. So T to the zeroth power is just one. Now let's just consider this upper right, uh, or this upper left entry. So one times one is gonna be one. One, and then T to the first power is just T, right? Um, uh, times zero, right? Well, that's gonna just be zero, so we could skip that first power t to the second power, right, here's a t to the second power, times negative one, this is where we get that negative, right, and then over two factorial, two factorial, which is just two, right. So what, what this is, this is just really the product, or not the product, technically speaking, but this is the result of just considering all of these upper left entries on the matrix, on the matrices that we've taken powers of. 
We can do the same thing for the red, those have color coded those. We can do the same thing for the bottom right and left entries as well, where we get these. Okay. Now, what do these look like? Well, these look like Taylor expansions, again, uh, not this Taylor expansion, but these are Taylor expansions of uh, trigonometric functions, right? So sine and cosine. More specifically, this is a cosine, this is a cosine, this is a sine, and this is a sine. This is just a negative of this. And so we get this, right? So this is an interesting thing here. What we get is a road. This is a rotation matrix, right? So you could take some vector and you can operate on that vector with this matrix and you rotate that vector, right? So your vector is in some plane and you, again, you can rotate that with a matrix, right? You do that with matrix, you do that rotation with matrix. But what we just said here is that the this here, e to the to the to the uh, matrix to the power of a matrix times some variable or some parameter is also this this also does rotation because we said it equals this. This is very this is a very interesting thing. The matrix in here plays a key uh, component. It plays a key role in um, in quantum mechanics, right? We say that this is a generator. This is the generator of rotations, of this type of rotation. This is a generator. You can, I would strongly encourage um, taking this idea and trying it for other matrices, right? Try it for another matrix that maybe would look like um, something like this, maybe. Uh, zero, one, negative one, one. See what type of rotation matrix that would result in, right? This is all out of curiosity, and I've actually done this before. It's, it's, a, it's kind of fun, right? It's, personally for me, I, I'm a math and physics person. I think it's kind of interesting and fun to see what type of rotations uh, rotation matrices these things correspond to. And this is the beginnings of something called Lie algebra, right? So, or Lie, or Lie groups, right? Because Lie groups involve themselves in continuous rotations, right? So you can take a rotation of some vector, right? And the generator of those rotations is this thing, that um, this, this matrix here, okay? Whenever we apply this operator, to some vector, just like I'm doing here, this is sort of a continuous way of operating on on, on this vector. Right here, with, this is kind of, uh, you put in a value of t, right? And you can operate on some vector in this way, but you're doing the same thing here. And the nice thing about having these exponents is that they're gonna play a key role again in quantum mechanics. Uh, quantum mechanics is going to have a lot of e to the power of something, right? And we're going to see that these are, the, we're going to see that there's going to be specific types of generators that correspond to different types of symmetries in quantum mechanics. But this is just to get our feet wet a little bit on the bare bones mathematics behind these types of, um, these, these types of objects, right? these exponentials that we're calling generators. Okay. So with that being said, what I'm going to do now, you know, I, I also want to encourage before, before I, before we leave, try, just try doing this with say a matrix that looks like, uh, like this. Oops. What might that look like? This is a three entry matrix. You can do, you could theoretically do this, right? There's gonna be a lot of zeros in the result. Um, 
but nevertheless, we're gonna you're gonna have some some type of interesting uh, end matrix that can operate on some vector, right? So, with okay, again, again, with all that being said, you can you can experiment with these types of matrices, and you can understand how they are related to continuous rotations. This is the basis of Lie groups, and this is at the basis of quantum mechanics as well. This is a very important realization that we will take all the way home with us when we study quantum field theory, especially also when we, if, or when we cover QCD, which is going to be, a, which is going to be in a different playlist, but it's essential to keep this type, this type of group theory in mind, where we have exponentials related to rotations. Okay, that's the key take home, right? So with all that being said, again, this is, I said this was going to be a short video. I'm running on about 11 minutes, it looks like. Fairly shorter than what I'm usually, than what I usually do. Um, but yeah, if you enjoy this kind of content, you can visit my Patreon page, you can hit subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.